Hey guys, in this video, I'll be simulating a bidirectional DC to DC converter. So for that, we'll need first a power GUI block. We'll only be showing a step-by-step -step simulation procedure and not the design. So we'll need two batteries. So we'll take one battery for now. And we'll need a MOSFET, which acts as a switch. So we'll need two MOSFETs. One will act as a buck converter switch and the other will act as a boost converter switch. For individual videos of buck converter and boost converter, there are other videos that we have done. So you can kindly refer to that video. And we'll need a voltage measurement block, a series RLC branch, which we'll be using as an RC and an inductance branch. We will need a scope. And we'll need a PID controller, which will help regulate and provide switching pulses. So PID controller, take the first one. And then we'll also need a PWM generator. So there are many types of PWM generators on Simulink. We will, for this purpose, we will need a PWM DC to DC convert, DC to DC um, PWM generator and not a two level or a three, three level PWM generator. So next, we'll just arrange, rearrange these. Yeah, and um, now we'll need a scope to see the output. We already have a scope. We'll also need a display block to see the output voltage. So if any of you guys want videos or the file exchange, um, if anyone wants the file to be exchanged with you guys, you can always write us a mail and we'll exchange the files or you can drop your email IDs in the comment section below. So this is one MOSFET and we'll copy paste it and make another MOSFET out of it. So we'll join the two MOSFETs. And um, so this MOSFET will be in charge for the boost converter operation. And the MOSFET on top of this will be in charge for the buck converter operation. So you can lay down the path of individual circuits and within this major big circuit and see how it acts as a buck converter or a boost converter as well. So we'll just rotate and flip this battery. Or else we don't need to. Yeah. So we can't connect a simple capacitor across a voltage source um, so we will make it an rc source and connect it and um, yeah and then we'll also have to make it an rl branch an l branch is fine so same thing here in your rc And then after this, we'll connect the batteries across the terminals. We'll rotate and flip it up and down. Yeah. So this is how the overall circuit looks like. Now we'll give the gating pulses. Um, so we will need a bus selector to select voltage values of the battery. So initially there'll be two signals that are, um, it's not true, like it's not good, like it's just random signals. So you'll have to select the signal that you want. So we'll select a voltage signal. And we'll attach a scope and a display block so we can observe the voltage. Yeah, and we'll do the same thing for the other side as well. We'll rotate and flip the bus selector. And uh, we make nominal voltage of this battery as 80 volts and data capacity we'll keep it at 7 ampere hour whereas the other one will make it 10 volts and we'll keep it at 7 ampere hour data capacity. So 
So now once this is done, um, I'll just name this as, as the buck operation and the other side is the boost operation. So now we connect the PID controller. So we need a constant block which acts as the reference voltage. And um, so we need an add block as well, which will make it as plus and minus. So basically a subtract block. Um, so the output of this block would be an error signal, which would be passed to the PID controller, which gives, which is passed to the DP, DC to DC generator, PWM generator, which gives, which is given to the uh, MOSFETs. So we'll continuously keep measuring the output voltage of the battery. So this will act as the input voltage for the error signal and the constant is the reference value. So the difference between the constant that's reference and the um, continuous voltage measured is that the error signal so integral is i which is 7 um so the design hasn't been specifically like we haven't specifically designed the system for accurate results so we can expect a 10 percent uh, variation in the output voltage so if you guys want to know the design as well you can kindly drop it in the description below i will send you the documents for the same So now once this is done, we'll uh, give the output of this to the MOSFET. But before that, we'll do the same thing for the other side buck operation as well. So we'll have to measure the voltage across the battery in this condition in this case as well we'll do exactly that so we can set the constant input voltage 11.5 volts so that will be the plus and the subtracted value will be the continuous voltage that's measured at all times Now this goes into the MOSFET. Yeah, so this is the circuit. Now um, we'll quickly run the circuit and see the output results. So like I told, you can expect 10 to 15% um, variation in the output voltage because the design is not specifically made for the circuit, but it's just a, rather a concept of how the circuit works. And yeah, so we'll go ahead and simulate the circuit now. So as you can see, um, the voltage V is 93.47. And there's a small mistake. I have to make a reconnection. So let me run the circuit again. So as you can see, it is uh, eleven point six eight volts. So that's how it works. That's how the bidirectional DC to DC converter works. So if you like the video, can you subscribe to our channel and like the video and do comment if you have any doubts and do check out our other videos as well. Thank you.